hello. I didn't see you come in. Uh, uh, good afternoon. My name is James Holloway of the Gonzo History Project and Gonzo History Gaming Edition, and for the last couple of days I've been writing on my gaming blog about the world of Cinnabar, Raven C.S. McCracken's seminal 1993 inter-genre role-playing game. Uh, a game famous among the RPG community for its eclectic mix of influences and its uh, controversial design decisions. Um, and today, I'm going to undertake a little bit of an experiment. I've talked a lot on my blog already about the setting and the aesthetics of Cinnabar, but I haven't really talked about the rules. And today, I'm going to try to create a character using the Cinnabar character generation rules. Now, I've never done this before. I have no real familiarity with the rules. I mean, I, I've sort of flipped through it. Uh, I've got a clean sheet of graph paper, a freshly sharpened pencil, a calculator app on my phone in case I need it, a cooling drink, the Cinnabar rulebook, and a big pile of dice which should be all that I need. So, uh, we actually jump into character creation pretty quickly in the Cinnabar Rules. It starts here on page 19. And, uh, as you can see here, the character creation process involves 22 distinct steps and 34 tables. I'm hoping that we won't have to roll on all of them, but actually, I I'm sort of hoping that we do. Um, I do like random tables, which I guess means this is the game for me. Alright, so let's begin. The first step in character generation is Generate basic initial characteristic scores. Uh, and I, I turn the page to page 20 and I find out this. Every adventurer has six basic scores. It, it doesn't tell me what they are, but... Okay, that seems like a, an oversight. They're used to determine my adventurer's capabilities. And they're generated uh, using uh, AD20. So uh, there's a high degree of randomness here. Uh, and what I do is I... Roll the 20-sided die seven times, and re-roll as necessary until I have seven scores greater than or equal to eight. All right? So I'm going to roll seven times. A little unbalanced. Uh, next, drop the two lowest of the seven scores and replace them by rolling one new score, which must be higher than the two scores you dropped. <laughs> well, that goes both my nines. If I get five natural 20s, I get an immortal born character, by the way, but uh, the odds against that seem pretty... it seems pretty unlikely that that would happen. Okay. Next, I have to select a type of character. There are one, two, three, four methods for selecting a type of character. Uh, I can use the traditional method, which is completely random. I can choose among the basic races, Aquarians, Dwarves, Elves, Gnomes, Humans, Were-Men, who aren't Were-Anything, uh, and Winged Warriors, and then I enter an open guild to study another class's art. This apparently creates a powerful and enjoyable combination, whereas the other one creates uh, endless variation and surprise. Uh, and then, or, or I can take a non-class adventurer, or a variant race from creatures as diverse as Arachmen or Mutant Vampires. Uh, but what I'm going to do is go with the traditional method and go totally random. Uh, now, in order to join one of these classes, I need to have characteristics that meet or exceed certain minima, which presumably is why I rolled three times, because I might randomly roll a class that I didn't qualify for. So now I'm going to see whether any of these classes correspond to my scores. But since my scores are super high, I, I think actually I should be okay. So to be a Shadow Warrior, I need two 18s and a 16, which is fine, since I have two 19s, a 20, and a 17. To be a Golden or Scarlet Tiger, I need a 19, a 17, and a 16. Again, I'm fine. And to be a Wereman, I just need one score at 18, which seems like a bit of a cheat. And for instance, if I wanted to be a Mutant or a Ninja, any scores would qualify me. So apparently these are trash-tier classes. Just being a Ninja is not cool when you could be a Scarlet Tiger. Now, again, the only thing I know about any of these classes is that all the illustrations of tigers are uh, Iron Fist, from Power Man and Iron Fist with ears drawn on, um, and uh, where men aren't where animals. They're something completely different that just happens to be called where. Bearing in mind that where already just means man. Um, so, for the sake of argument, I'm going to be a Shadow Warrior. Um, the different agility scores are Constitution, Strength, Agility, Dexterity. 
I've spoken before about the um, sort of uh, standard fixes to D&D that you find in a lot of games, and one of the most common is uh, making agility and dexterity two separate things. Um, okay, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, basic characteristics. So now, uh, I have no idea what a Shadow Warrior is, um, but apparently we're good at strength, agility... Okay, this gets a bit complicated. I am a Shadow Warrior, so I get a series of attribute bonuses. I get plus two to my agility, which must make it a minimum of 20. So note that even if I had, so like that's what those minima were, that I'd have to satisfy these requirements. So it's a good thing that I looked at this class table before assigning my bonuses. My other bonus, oh, I've done this wrong. Okay, I have to switch my intelligence to my constitution. Uh, and I now have an ego score, which is the sum of my intelligence and wisdom. I don't know what that does, but I'm sure we'll find out later. Now I get a bonus to my strength, which is 10d6. Good heavens. Yeah, so now note that the bonus to my strength is vastly more important to what my strength wound up being than the initial amount that I... Hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if you really like dice rolling... Whoop, Okay, so that's a uh, six, five, five, four, 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 three, three, two, two, uh, six, sixteen, uh, twenty-eight, thirty-four, thirty-eight. So my strength bonus is thirty-eight, increasing my strength from eleven to forty-nine. Uh, this is a pretty conservative. Uh, Strength bonus. The giant class gets a uh, sixty one hundred. Um, uh, well, actually, this is about average. Most most classes get either ten d four or ten d six, which might make you wonder why I bothered rolling for a base characteristic in the first place. But uh, if you wonder that, then you're not Raven C S McCracken. Um, I do not have the official uh, World of Cinnabar character sheet because. Uh, I don't have a printer that works right now, um, which is a shame because it looks like a tax form and would have been fun. To, actually, it's in the back somewhere. I will say this. There are a lot of good resources in this book. Like, if you look at the, the back of it, it's full of all the tables that you're going to need. Uh, Cinnabar character sheets. Um, I, I don't know. That doesn't look insanely complicated compared to other games of the same time period. I mean, it's got a lot of stuff on it, but it's far from unique uh, in that respect. Oh, okay, anyway. Let's get on with creating our character. Um, I haven't given him a name or anything yet, which I should do. Um, there is also a pretty, I mean, it's a little cluttered, but there is definitely a helpful diagram of where what goes on your character sheet and how to calculate these things. Uh, reminds me of the one in Call of Cthulhu. Uh, Although, uh, the one I call it to is not quite so complicated.